my Filipino adventure. And as you can see, you know who this guy is. Everyone knows who this is. This is Mark from Every Man Has a Story. And it's weird for him to be on this side of the tail because he's always interviewing other people. So, but if you watch his channel, and which a lot of people do, you'll know a lot of the stuff that we're gonna talk about because he talks about this on the channel. But if you haven't watched his channel, let this be an introduction and I want you to go subscribe. But uh, tell me how you first thought about coming to the Philippines. Well, um, as I mentioned on my channel several times, I was going through a really dark place in my life, bankruptcy, divorce, all that stuff. And um, I was going to go to Thailand, actually. I said, watching YouTube videos, I said, I want to go someplace where I can survive on my Social Security and on maybe a little bit of side job. And I thought Thailand was the place. And then I stumbled across uh, some videos by a guy named Rike, yeah. who's got a channel, Rike Beyond the Sea. And it showed the Philippines and saying that people speak English here, um, very easy to come to the country. Back then, you could just throw your, your passport and you got a 30-day visa at the airport. And then he also showed a little apartment complex. I said, well, that looks exactly like where I'd like to live. So I tried it out. I bought a, a one-way ticket. Uh, back then, this is three years ago, it was, it was right around $600 for the ticket. And then I remember it was, I had $600 for the ticket and I had $600 in cash. And so, you need a throwaway ticket. Yeah, and you need a throw, throwaway ticket was only like 12 bucks. Okay. So this is the first time you've never... Never been here. Never no, been desire, here. no desire to come here at all, none. But then all of a sudden, next thing you know it, you're moving here permanently. Well, when I moved here, I was going to stay two weeks at a Airbnb, then go to Thailand. Oh, okay. But um, I got here, things didn't work out so good the first couple days. Like I mentioned to you earlier, I, I broke my new computer, lost my new cell phone. But then all of a sudden, it was like the clouds parted. And all of a sudden, every day, my life started getting better. And it's done that for three years now. So in, in those two weeks, did yeah. you decided why, why leave? Yeah, because I, I started meeting people. I moved out of the Airbnb into a studio apartment in Dulce Vida. It was very nice. Started meeting people. Rented a little Honda scooter to get around on. And all of a sudden, like, the world just started opening up. And it's only had $600. Yeah. And it takes time to set up your accounts. Were you receiving your um, retirement? Yeah, yeah, I was getting my Social Security. Um, but most of that money was going to pay bills back home. Uh -huh. I only had like $300 left after paying the bills back home. So I was tutoring Cambly online, at basically $5 an hour, but they pay you every week through PayPal. And so I was surviving off that. My rent was only two fifty a month. And a nice little apartment, furnished with internet and everything. And uh, it's just things just kept getting better and better. And then I moved to a nicer apartment and started doing my YouTube channel. And, you know, things kept getting better and better and better. And then uh, moved into this place. And, Which uh, is beautiful. And things just kept getting better. And I'm married and got lots of friends. And <clears throat> it's just hard to believe how far I've come yeah. in three, three years. years. Yeah. And, and, and financially, you're, you're stable? Yeah, you know? we're fine, yeah. No. I don't even think about money anymore. And let this be a lesson. Don't... This is like like jackass. Do not try these stunts at home. Now, Mark had a great great outcome, and some people don't have that outcome, as we saw on the Old Dog's channel with that, that yeah. fellow. Who, he, he came here with a, quite a bit of money, but yet things didn't work out for him. So, Yeah, I say that too. Like, oh, it was desperation move for me. I was backed into a corner, and I had very few options left. You know, it's like it was either do this or die, basically. Were you yeah. actually thinking of? Yeah, I was basically suicidal at the time. It was so bad. Wow. I mean, things are very, very dark. Um, I just didn't see any hope. I, I, I wasn't depressed. I just, I didn't see any future. Like, there was no point in living. I said, I'll never see my kids again. Lost my house. There's no job I really want. I can go selling cars, but I hate doing that. Can't go on a cruise ship because of my heart condition. And I just saw no, I just saw no future at all. And then... You know, you, through YouTube, you know, see Thailand, see the Philippines, and said, what the hell, you know, what's the worst that can happen? Right. And came over here, and <clears throat> it's amazing, you know, how it's changed. It's like a thousand percent difference. Now, this is a really incredible story. Um, I'm going to post a video on my channel of a fellow I just met, um, and he did some something similar to that. Uh, but he had a lot more backup than, than you did when you came. Um, and he, he has got some money saved, but it just, to me, it's, the thought, it's so scary for me to, 
of everything that I worked for and built to sell and move. Even though I knew I wanted to do it, there's something in me that's like so scared of that comfortable home base to, to cut that loose and come here. Mm-hmm. And then you, I, you, like you said, it was de- desperation for you, but still with $600 in your pocket and, and three years later now you're on top of the world. That's I don't know on top of the world, but I'm doing great. I'm happy. I'm, yeah. I don't worry about money anymore. I pay all my bills on time or early. Um, got very little debt left. I'm still paying off things from, you know, yeah. being in America, but you know, but being they in can't come year, after you, can they? Well, I pay anyway, so, you know, I guess they could. I always thought about things. I'm all paid up and everything. But yeah. I'm thinking, what if I charge about stuff in the Philippines? What could they do? Yeah. Come get me? No, I've actually got excellent credit now. It's like, oh. But, yeah, I went to a bankruptcy once. It was a long time ago, seven years ago, maybe longer than that. Yeah, but, well, you know, like, I lost my house, lost everything. Yeah, you know? I had a house I had for 15 years and, you know, lost it all. Yeah, it's painful. We did the same thing. I put, I think, 80 grand on the house and beat. $2,200 a month for 10 years. And mm-hmm. I walked away with zero. Nothing. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Well, I got, they had a thing called keys for cash. If you move out of the house and leave it, you know, broom swept, they gave you like $3,000. Oh, awful nice of them, huh? Yeah. yeah. And then with that, I you know, paid some more debts and survived for a while before I came here. Now, you say that. Uh, you were a little disconnected from your children. Has any of that changed or no? Well, my my oldest daughter's autistic, so she doesn't understand why I'm not even in America anymore. Uh-huh. And my youngest daughter uh, thinks it's disgusting that I'm married to a young woman. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, yeah so that's, you hear that a lot, you know, so it's like, yeah. just doesn't understand. Yeah. Doesn't accept it, put it that way. You broke the rules. <laughs> Are you happy? Very. No, there's no rules broken. Never been happier. And he said that when I interviewed this guy yesterday, I said, any regrets? He goes, yeah, my regret is I didn't do it 10 years earlier coming here. Do you feel the same or um, you were just at that point? No, not life? really, because um, if I would have gone 10 years before, um, I was still working on cruise ships and had my career, and I loved what I was doing. Uh-huh. You know, so if I had that heart, you know, quadruple bypass surgery, I'd still be on a ship, but you know, they, I get forced out because of that. And how is your how is your health nowadays? Good. It's better, it's better, you know, They're not perfect, but much better. Because I do have some underlying health conditions, and I was worried about that. Now I don't have any heart attacks under my belt, but I do have uh, a leaky valve, which the doctor said yeah. will probably lead to the day you die. It may or may not be an issue. I have AVPs and trickler. It's this one. Sometimes my heart will start beating before it's finished. Yeah. So I like. It'll be an irregular pattern. I wouldn't say a murmur, but you know, it's like a, you can feel it in your chest sometimes at yeah. night. So, and I had a high, little bit of high blood pressure and high cholesterol. So yeah, I had high blood pressure too. Take, uh, That's when I first realized I had a problem. This is when I was still back in America. I woke up one morning totally deaf. Couldn't hear, yeah. like I had no ears at all, zero. And, and uh, high blood pressure? I went to uh, the prompt care center, and the first thing to do is take your blood pressure I don't remember the exact numbers, but it was like both numbers were in the 200s. Oh, wow. And it's like basically you should have blown up or be dead. They started giving me all these drugs to get my blood pressure down. And that's when I first realized I had a problem, but I felt fine. You know, it's a silent killer. Yeah. I had no idea. And is that when they, they found that you had, uh, did you get blockage? Is that what you had? Well, what happened was, is like I got on blood pressure medicine, and then it was like two years later, I had a heart attack on a ship, on a carnival ship. I know that's true. Had to be evacuated off the ship. Yeah, and then uh, what they did an angiogram on me and said that you had a heart attack, but your arteries were fine. And then, like another two years later, I had a heart attack, and uh, they gave, did the angiogram. Said when I woke up from that, they said you've got all four arteries are ninety percent blocked. If we don't put you in an ambulance, take you to another hospital, and do quadruple bypass today, you're going to die. Period. Wow. It's your choice. So they did bypass. They didn't put stents. No, in? no bypass. Quadruple, all four arteries. <clears throat> and that was seven years ago. Still, though, and you've been here for three, three so yeah. four years after a major surgery to, to move here. Now, you found that the, the heat plays it? No, it doesn't bother me at all. Okay. The weather's beautiful here. It's like the weather we have today has been the weather we had every day year round. It's basically saying, yeah, this is the rainy season, and 
Last night it rained yeah. a couple hours and it stopped. But this is basically the weather. The ocean is the same temperature today as it will be six months from now. Like when I was in Miami, um, before I came here, I took my daughter to Miami for six weeks and it was in January and the water was almost too cold to swim in. Yeah, the Atlantic is like that, yeah. But here, you know, it's beautiful, you know, year round. Yeah. I love the weather. Well, there's, this is a little, there's not much difference, let's say, between winter and summer. Here. No. But in, in summer, there it's, you know, maybe three or five degrees warmer. Yeah. But it's funny because I checked, we were in San Juan City, York, mm -hmm. a couple days ago. And it was rainy and overcast, and it was about 86 degrees, which was comfortable. I checked in Detroit, it's over 100 degrees. Yeah. They have a heat wave. So here I am getting a vacation from the heat in the Philippines. Right. From America. So it's crazy. And it's like year-round. Do you miss the, the changing of the seasons or no? No. No. I don't miss anything. Nothing. I mean, I thought I would. I, I miss Walmart. Yeah. I sure wish there was a Walmart here. So I could spend $1,000 there, but... Um, aside from that, you know, maybe a good a good Mexican restaurant. I think there is a, isn't there a Walmart in, in not here in Manila. There may be. I I don't know. I'll check. We'll They've there. got them in Mexico. Walmart. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, somebody told me that there was a Walmart in Manila, but I've never seen it. But we're heading to Manila tomorrow, so I'll, I'll well, see let me know. If I <laughs> yeah, it might be worth a hundred dollar ticket to go out there. Sure would. Thousand dollars for the stuff. But you know, I just. I've just gotten so settled in here, and I've got so many friends, like, I've never in my life had this many friends, ever. And I think one reason, because, like, when I was living in a, in a middle-class neighborhood in my house for 15 years, going back and forth, working on ships, six months, three months, whatever, been home for a month or two, and then back to sea, and I was single, you don't know your neighbors, they don't want to hang out with you, because you're some single guy. Right. Um, and so and people on the ship are coming and going all the time. So you had friends, but they're going back to Romania or Russia, or Ukraine or wherever. Um, whereas here, like I'm settled in one place and I meet friends and I'm still here and they're not going anywhere. And so I just have more and more friends all the time. Every, it's like today I made like three new friends yeah. in one day. Yeah, yeah, I noticed that too. Um, the channel, of course my channel is a big reason, but yeah. you know. But even if not, because I, uh, I'm not as recognizable as you are, obviously, because um, my channel is much smaller, but I, and I'm not shy, and I like to talk too much, but I'll start a conversation with almost everyone I meet, and I just find that people away from homeland, it, it's, the, the connection with another foreigner is... That's a really good trait to have. My father was like that. Yeah. He's just starting conversations with total strangers, and... I had to learn how to do that when I worked on cruise ships and one of my first jobs as assistant cruise director, my boss, the cruise director, on the first day on the ship, he said, so, so what are we doing tonight? You know, it's the first day of the cruise and the main lounge, all the people are in there. He said, we're just going and socialize. And my heart goes through my chest, like, socialize? And he meant just walk in and start talking to people. And so I forced myself to do it. Now I'm really good at it. Yeah. I'll talk to people at the grocery store, if I'm in line at the bank, wherever I'm at, I, I just talk to people. It's amazing. I've made friends like that. I've found out interesting things, had interesting conversations, and, you know, people love it when you talk to them, you know? Yeah, I think I embarrass my wife a lot, because I'll talk to anyone, or be on a ferry or a bus or something, and I'll swing over and just start talking to them. Yeah. And I think what a lot of people don't do is I'll start conversations up with with Filipinos. Oh yeah, me too. And I don't speak a lot, but I'll say enough to make them laugh. Like, oh, you speak the sign? No, I don't. And then, yeah, because they're the nicest people in the world. I love the Filipino people. Yeah. And I like starting up conversations with them. It's like the other day, Jen and I were taking a walk down the beach here. We go out at sunset when it's cool, walking down the beach, and there's these four boys, five boys, and they were up there loading uh, bottles of water onto a, a lifeboat. And it turns out there was a ship out here, still there, and they were getting water for the ship. It's their ship. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're loading up the water. So, is that your ship? Yeah. The next thing you know, I start talking to them. And we sat there for 15 minutes, finding all about them and where the ship went, how long they worked on the ship. And it was real interesting. And they were thrilled that, you know, this foreigner like, yeah. was interested in who they were and what they were doing and what their ship was like. And, you know, where they went, things like that. It was a good conversation. Yeah, it's amazing. Like, they have like this lack of ego or yeah. lack of like America's like this chip. Like, everybody wants something from me. Why are you talking to me? What do you want from me? 
and then this, they just get so much pleasure from it. And I think it's a lack of ego. So, yeah. And and then the great thing about that is you'll find out down the road that this person knows this person, this person. Oh yeah. And then you'll get on a boat or you'll get a tip about something in the Filipino community community because you've started these conversations up. Yeah, it's just a great way to live. All right, well, I would say this is just a little taste of uh, what Mark's got to offer on his channel. Uh, um, mostly what he does is he interviews uh, people that he meets, but I, like I said, I wanted to turn the tables on him and interview him this time. But uh, it's been great talking to you. It's great spending the afternoon with you and your lovely wife. And uh, Same here. I enjoyed it. Yeah, so go Hope check out. see you again. Check out Mark's channel. He's got how many videos do you have up now? I don't even know. Hundreds. Hundreds. <laughs> yeah, and I, you will not be disappointed because even if the guest is dull, there's always something to take away. And it's very rare that I think you ever have a dull guest. Um, yeah, there's always something to take away from from the conversations. And I also like it that they're about a half hour. Cause yeah, I try many, and keep them on thirty minutes. Yeah, so. but too many people try to cut them short, and people oh, they'll get bored. I'll leave those. If, when you shut them off, I'm like, ah, oh, it's over? Yeah. Oh, is there a part two? <laughs> I really like them that length. So, anyway, so until next time, stay cool, and as always, stay classy. Yes, but no. No, but yes. Yeah. Right. We're looking forward to sleeping in our bed. And I'm looking forward back to my work. You love your job. Oh, huh? yeah. That's one thing I'm not looking forward to. <laughs> I don't want to go back to work. I think I've, I've decided that I'm retiring soon.